Hey everybody, welcome to my final <laughs> curriculum choices video for the upcoming 2022 through 2023 homeschool year. This will be for my 12 year old. He's, I don't know, a seventh grader maybe if you had to put him in a grade. Uh, he is the oldest of my five kids and I have already done all our other curriculum videos, the independent subjects, the group subjects and so on. I have put them all in a homeschool 2022 through 2023 playlist so you can see all of them and I'm super excited you'll see why in a minute how I will have plenty of material for content for upcoming videos so let me jump in this is the giant book stack and there's a little stack off to the side here as well for my oldest and I am excited that the spine of our school for him for this year, as well as my other kids, is the heart of Dakota. Sorry, let me try to get these books off to the side so I can pull them in when I need them. Heart of Dakota is this like hidden gem that I found a year ago. Guys, I have been sitting on this curriculum for so long. I've been absolutely excited to start this with my kids. It is a literature-based Charlotte Mason approach homeschool curriculum where you focus on one time period in history for the year and it is God-based, Christ-centered. I absolutely love how it's all laid out and I really hope it's gonna be a great fit for us because this has me excited. This has me so excited. We're gonna be doing so much reading. Um, I, I'm just thrilled. So let me kind of walk you through this and show you all of the books and all of the kind of individual subjects that tie in to this program. So how this works for this current year or this uh, level in the curriculum, uh, it's from revival to revolution. So that is the mid 1700 through the 1900. So that's the period of the revivals and great awakenings all the way through the industrial revolutions. So that is what he will be focusing on in history. So let me skip past the kind of like how to use this book uh, pages into the lesson plans. So this is the book that is actually like the teacher's manual or the entire lesson plans for the whole year. One page spread like this is for one day. They have them labeled as units. I would call it weeks. So you have four days. So this is week one, day one, day two, day three, and day four. And then you start unit two or week two. This is perfect for us because our homeschool group meets on Fridays and so we only have time to fit in four days of book work through the official school year. Oh, and did I mention this particular year, my family is also transitioning from a more traditional academic school year into more of a year round homeschool year. I'll keep you updated. That's like a separate thing from the curriculum choices. Um, but I will probably be mentioning that and I will let you know and keep you updated on how that's working for us uh, as we go. So every single day they start by reading um, some literature or living books. There are some spines that you use to read about history and then all of the other subjects kind of branch off and relate. So let me start with some of the history books that I have for him. I'm pretty sure um, I did not purchase every single book for the curriculum in one go because that's a lot of books. I looked ahead and I made sure I had all of the books I needed for like the first 10 to 16 weeks of school and then once we get mid-year I can purchase any books that I need then. That's allowing me to either find them free or thrifted or to just find the best deal on a new one. So that being said I will walk you through all of the books I have already for the history portion but I know I don't have them all. So let me just um, say that. Let's see, so it is this one and this one and this one. Are those the only ones I have right now? These might be the three that I have. Oh, and this one. Okay, so Hearts and Hands, the fourth volume of this series, The Chronicles of the Awakening Church, is one of the ones that he will be starting with. 
It just tells you what pages to read. It has questions. It tells you what to narrate. It tells you if you're supposed to write a narration or tell your teacher. It has all of the things that you need. And for me as the teacher, it has a key idea in I think every box. And this is great because when I ask him to maybe narrate to me or check up on him, then I don't have to have read the entire book. It kind of gives me uh, a possible narration or some key points that my child should hit in a narration or a written summary or something like that. So Hearts and Hands is one of them. George Washington's World is another. And these he will be reading on his own. I don't anticipate reading any of these aloud to him right now. Um, he's my oldest. I have five kids. I really need to focus on being available for my younger kids. I'm teaching them to read. Um, they can't read for themselves, things like that. So that makes me a little bit sad because all of these books look so good. So what I might do is just start reading them for myself over the next few months. And then that will allow us to at least discuss whether officially during school hours or just for fun in the off hours. Um, we can just talk about it and I'll know what's going on. So those ones, I think eventually he is going to hit the story of Napoleon. So this is another one that he's going to get. And then this is nice because it breaks it up from him having to read to being able to listen. What in the world? This is volume three, world empires, world missions, world wars. Oh, sorry. It's hard to see. So I have my glare from my light. So those are some of the key spines for the history portion. Um, this year he is going to be including a kind of a deep dive into the state study, which I'm really excited about because you've never really um, studied this in depth officially. So let me get all of these books. I think it's these ones here. So one is going to be this 50 States Under God. It's like a workbook. So he will be reading and writing right here in this book. It is a study of the states in order of statehood, timeline summary, progressive map study, summarizing the building of our nation. So that will be a fantastic study right there. Kind of going along with that, we have the United States History Atlas. So this is where geography is gonna come in. So some of the subjects like history you do every single day, you can see it's always here on every page. But some subjects, will rotate and this is kind of that charlotte mason influence where in order to get every subject in you don't do all the subjects every single day some are great to do a few times a week so they emphasize timelines a lot in this curriculum which i am a fan of so some days he'll work on creating and labeling a timeline some days he will get into poetry which all of the poems are here in the back of the book so he can read them from here and all of the assignments, I don't know, papers, questions, projects, whatever it is that they're gonna do is right here. Another thing that they tie in is geography and that's where I kind of got, got started with this. So this is going to be part of geography as well as, let me find it, oh, this right here. So what's nice is this is actually a resource that his younger sister is going to use as well. So this has tons of maps. This is all of the map track um discs the complete collection so he will have some maps that i will print from here he'll be interacting with those so that brings in the geography element let me see if there's another box rotated worthy words this kind of gets into i think research it gets into um some higher level thinking um this might be studying different speeches as well. I'm not 100% an exact definition of what this box is gonna do, but you can see right here, it's talking about a primary source is something that originates in the historical time period being studied, um, gives examples of that. But then here you're gonna read Pontiac's speech and then you're gonna answer some questions and it talks about it, it talks about um, different, like the speech in general, like. I think it's gonna to touch on things like what makes a good speech and why is it a timeless speech, things like that, as well as what did his actual speech say, things like that. Is that all of them? I think I touched on all of those boxes, okay? So back to the state study, another thing is going to be studying the signers, the 56 stories behind the Declaration of Independence. 
So this is gonna give a little biography on all of those men. Another exciting read that I wanna read. I am so looking forward to that. Um, I can't remember where this resource fits in. If it's um, it has to do with more like the state study or if it has more to do with the history study, but this is Thomas Jefferson's America, a Jim Weiss or Weiss, I can never remember how to pronounce it. So he will listen to this again, breaking up the large load of reading. So he will probably appreciate that. Um, there's an independent history study. I'm not exactly sure what makes it an independent history study different from like the history projects in the reading. I think it's just another thing they can do and it has the instructions right there. I love how the projects are usually very simple and include things you would probably already have on hand. And for the most part, your children can do them independently or the S is a signifier for semi-independent. So let me just kind of read this. So this you're actually going to be creating um, a feathered headdress. And so it tells you what to do. You don't do it all in one day. You're kind of, see, this says um, you started it on day two and worked on it on day three and this is day four so you're building on it it's not too long of a thing so that is exciting okay so it has this box up here called story time which i in my brain just renamed literature i feel like that's a a a better label for it so all throughout the year there's a long book list of quality literature um maybe some of them are biographies there might be some nonfiction in there i can't remember uh, different genres um, and it all again kind of ties into the time period and history. So I have some of these books. I don't think I have all of them yet but again I might be able to get some from the library or find them thrifted. So the first one is Amos Fortune Free Man and then in no order whatsoever I think these are all other ones that are from the literature box. Uh, Marie's Home, The Reb and the Redcoats, the Pirate Patriot, Songbird, The Voyage of Patient Goodspeed, Only the Names Remain, The Mozart Girl. So these are at least some, um, I don't think they're all, of the books that he will be reading and interacting with. So they will include questions, um, Can you assess the value or importance of being free? Some are reading comprehension type questions. I like how in parentheses they tell you what kind of a question it is. So it's asking you a question about synthesis. This is an evaluation type question and so forth. So it will bring all of those in. Um, I think I'm able to decide and choose for my student. Do I want him to tell me these? Do I, do I want him to write them down and kind of keep a journal um, of all of those Q and A's? And I like how there's kind of room for Choosing what's the best fit for your each student. Okay, this is a box. I'm gonna kind of do these sort of out of order. So all throughout this year, they're doing an inventor study, which I think is fabulous. It's like some extra science, but it's also history. So again, I do not have all of the books, but they are gonna use these two as kind of a spine, the story of inventions and four American inventors. And then there are also a bunch of biographies included, which I did not purchase all of them yet. I think I just have the first one, which is Michael Faraday. So when he is getting towards the end of this, I will make sure I have the next ones. I can't even remember how many there are. So um, I will have those so he can do all of those. Let me go into the Bible quiet time. Uh, where is it? Right here. Oh, one more thing related to history, actually. Um, draw and write through history. I cannot remember where it comes in, which box it's going to be rotated in uh, every so often. So I went ahead and got this. I absolutely love that there are longer passages and that there's so much detail and description and help and prompts to try to create these beautiful illustrations. And so I am going to require him to do the very best that he can do at his level. I'm hoping that over time you can see how his drawing and maybe even like the coloring it um, advances. And so I will be kind of counting it as art as well. And I would really like him to do his best. This is not just a little fun activity. I would like to 
emphasize it as a way to bring in almost another subject as we tie it into history. I'm running out of room, guys. <laughs> okay, so Bible quiet time every single day. He will spend some time by doing a Bible study. It's an uninductive Bible study. Um, it teaches them how to pray, gives them prompts. There's stuff in the back of the book to kind of help with that and working on scripture memory as well. I absolutely love that. This is the book. It is Hidden Treasures series. Actually, I think it's the Truth Tracker series, but um, my daughter is doing Philippians and it's called The Hidden Treasures in Philippians. He's doing Hebrews. It looks like this one has a few less maybe activities like this and a little bit more of the Q and A. Um, so it kind of feels like the Philippians one uh, is a little bit easier and maybe a little more fun. And this is kind of guiding your children to a more um, advanced in a way uh, book where it's more Q&A style as they walk them through the inductive method and you study the book of Hebrews. By the way, if you're hearing like a herd of elephants, it's because I'm in the basement and even if my kids are like tiptoeing upstairs, you can hear it so loudly down here. So I apologize for that, um, but I'm gonna keep going. And I, yeah, I just wanted you to know what that was. So Bible quiet time is every day. Math is every day. Now it gives you, um, their recommendation is Singapore math but we're absolutely completely 100% happy with our math. We do teaching textbooks and he is in pre-algebra. So because we're doing a transition to a year round school um, schedule, we have technically already finished our school year, but we don't wanna take the whole summer off for things like math and some language arts especially. So right now he has already started pre-algebra. We're doing it about two days a week. So he has already started that. That's an easy no-brainer. Um, basically, he'll ignore this box and he will just do his next lesson every single day. Language arts, I'm trying to bring in some of their recommendations and um, for the most part, I really enjoy their recommendations. So let me show you what I have over here. Um, first and foremost, we started this on our own. Again, because we're doing a year round school, um, my kids were doing daily grams. I was really interested in trying fix it grammar. I honestly find them very similar. This one is maybe a little bit more modern um, and possibly a little bit easier than daily grams. Honestly, they're about the same. I can do a, a comparison video. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a more in-depth opinion comparison video of fix it grammar compared to daily grams. Um, so we've barely started this. This is my teacher manual. Uh, so he will continue to do this, I don't know, maybe once a day, maybe twice a week. Um, for now, he does this a couple times a week to keep us fresh through the summer. And when we officially start all of this, I don't know exactly how it will fit in, but we will probably finish this book. And then I probably won't need to bring in the next level because everything is covered in here. Oh my goodness, my kids are getting settled down for lunch and they are making so much noise. I hope it's not a huge distraction, guys. Okay, another thing they talk about in their language arts is they love and recommend the Rod and Staff Building Christian English series. I actually found these for free, used, and this is the student book. I will be purchasing and looking for the teacher's manual because it will just make my life so much easier. I could just correct it and challenge myself to remember everything, but with five kids and the workload we're gonna have this year, I really, really, really wanna just have it for me as a backup. So I will be purchasing the teacher's manual, but it tells you um, progressing with courage. That's this book, Progressing with Courage, uh, lesson two. So that's probably right at the beginning. There's lesson one, lesson two, and it says the last half only. So um, I would have to look into it and try to figure out what exactly is the last half. What are they supposed to be learning um, and, you know, work with that. So that'll be that'll be something we figure out as we go. No problem. That's kind of how I do things anyways. Um, another thing that they will bring in a few days a week. So in your language arts, you have, you know, your grammar. Um, and then some days it wants you to bring in 
where is it, writing. Now they recommend the exciting world of creative writing. I don't know what I want him to do for writing right now. Um, I don't wanna purchase another book, I do know that. Um, his sister is studying kind of medieval times and I have the IEW medieval history-based writing lessons. This is what is actually recommended by Heart of Dakota for her in her, you know, her textbook. I already did the curriculum haul on this. And I'm considering um, having him join in with us because they will still be really good writing lessons. And then I'm doing two at a time instead of two separate writing programs. However, hang on, I've got all this stuff over here. Let me make some piles. I also, so we have this free book fair in our area. Um, a place where you can go twice a month and you can get free books of all kinds and they do have curriculum so they also had the u.s history based writing lessons volume one and explorers to gold rush i think covers some of the time period that he's in and so i'm considering having him do this one um so yeah this is one of those things that thankfully we have time before we officially start uh, the bulk of this curriculum. And so I can look through this, decide if I want to do that. I can look through hers, decide if I want to combine them or choose something else altogether. So we will see. Oh, there, there's a good pile. Okay. So, um, through the language arts, you're not usually doing writing and grammar all at the same time on the same day. You're usually doing one or the other and it kind of rotates you through. Um, another thing is the biblical worldview alternates with music appreciation. Does it do something else? I can't remember. I think it's just those two. So it will kind of alternate through those. So the biblical worldview starts with who is God and can I really know him? I've heard of this book before and I've absolutely wanted to try to incorporate it into our school year and I've never figured out how to do that. So I'm so glad that it's a main textbook in this year's curriculum. Uh, I think there's another book as you get towards the end of the year and of course I'll just purchase that when I need it. And then alternating with that is music appreciation. Now I've kind of read ahead and seen some of the discussion on the Facebook group. Have I mentioned the Facebook group in this video? I know I did in my other kids' curriculum hauls, but if you are thinking of doing Heart of Dakota, go and even if you don't use Facebook, I don't actually, um, apart from this, look for the Revival to Revolution Facebook group. It's not officially from Heart of Dakota, but it's a bunch of moms and teachers who have used this program. They have great advice. You can ask questions, of course, but they have files. And instead of purchasing the student notebook, which was going to cost like another 50 bucks just for this one child, I decided to use their free printables and their free resources online. I was able to print off some pages. I'm going to look and see if there's more I can print off and have him write answers in a regular notebook instead of using the student notebook. So I'll keep you updated on whether or not that's actually going to work for the whole year or if it would have just been better to bite the bullet, pay the 50 bucks, get the student notebook. So I'll update you on that. But as I was kind of looking through the Q&A and the page with like the, I don't know, the interactions, the comments and so forth, um, a lot of people kind of had a problem with this box and the way that you um, have this resource. It's a CD-ROM. You're supposed to print uh, like these printables and put together um, the, like this little book and uh, booklet kind of thing. And I didn't purchase that. I only got this, the story of classical music. And I think probably what I'll do at least to get started is anytime there's like an activity, he can skip that. And really all he's gonna do is on the day, the story of classical music, CD four, it says to play, you know, who's who, the composers, scroll down, click these ones. I will probably just have him listen to those. And if it says, to write down something or um, have any sort of activity, he can do that, but skip the other, almost like a lap book, uh, notebooking type thing with the other, the other disc. So I hope that made sense. 
Another thing that I can totally update you on as I actually use this and figure it out a little more. Okay, this is a super long video. I'm almost done. The last box you may have noticed down here I haven't done is science. So it does weave science into history, to inventions, and things like that, which I absolutely love. However, they recommend a curriculum called Exploration Education. You have to purchase the teacher's manual, the logbook, and this kit with all these supplies to like you make an electric racer, like a little race car kind of thing, and a bunch of other things that looks cool. But to buy the kit, it was like $140. And I could not justify spending for one student, for one subject, $140 curriculum, especially when I would have to replace most of that because it's consumable. So like if my daughter, if we like this curriculum, my daughter will be in this level next year. I'd have to buy a new student book and a new kit. And I just couldn't justify that. So I was trying to decide, I was reading these boxes. I was scanning through, trying to figure out what are they actually learning in science this year? Could I find something else? Like what area of science are they studying? So I was looking at the key ideas. Thank you, key ideas. And it says experiment with speed, velocity, displacement, and distance. And you're supposed to interact with the uh, racer and some sort of glider that you make. And then like the next day it was talking about Newton's third law of motion. And I was like, that's physical science. And so I went back to one of my favorite science curriculums of all time, the God's Design series. And I looked at the chapters. So this is the teacher's manual. Um, where's the, where's the table? Actually, let me use the kid one because it's colorful. So this has three um, areas of study actually all in one. Machines and motions, heat and energy, inventions and technology. And I'm like, ooh, that sounds like what he's learning. Would this be compatible? So what were the things I read? Um, it was talking about Newton's law. So there's the first, second, and third law of motion speed and velocity, acceleration. I think that's what I was reading. Yeah, speed, velocity, displacement, distance. So even though none of these page numbers are gonna match, the order um, in, that these subjects are laid out in this book are gonna be different than the order laid out in this book. I think what I'm gonna do is use this curriculum because guys, together to buy this giant teacher's manual and this student book costs like 60 bucks or 70 bucks. This was so much more worth it. And then if I have to replace the student book, um, I can't remember, do you actually write in this? You don't even actually write in this. So I can use, reuse all of this for my daughter without spending a penny next year. So what I'm gonna do, it is gonna create a little bit of extra work for me. I'm probably gonna do like a month at a time or I don't know, eight weeks at a time. I'm gonna have to go through and actually look at what they're learning. I'll probably put a sticky note on this page with the pages or chapters in this book that he has to read when he gets there. It includes its own activities like building, maybe you actually build something. You're gonna build a series, uh, series in parallel circuits. Um, maybe it's gonna have you research something. So I will use the activities here. Um, and match them up as much as possible. And I'll probably also create a, a master spreadsheet. That way, if a sticky note falls out, we're not in trouble, but I want it in the book um, as well. So maybe I'll even write it in pencil or write it in um, er erasable pen or something like that. So it's in the book as well. So that is what I'm going to do with science. I really hope it works out and is not like a huge deal. But to save almost $100, I, I'm willing to do a little bit of work like that. So that is what we're going to do. Um, and I knew I already loved this curriculum anyways. Oh my goodness. Take a deep breath. I think that is everything. I think that covers all of the subjects that get rotated throughout. I think this is going to be a rich, lovely curriculum. I cannot wait to start it. I can't wait to read have my kids read, see how they grow. And this is a great way to foster independence and help them as they are learning to kind of take control of their own education. And I really want my kids to be lifelong learners. 
And most of us, if we continue to learn as we're adults, we do it by reading. How do you find good books? How do you find good literature? How do you find good living books on nonfiction topics? And this helps us engage and we'll teach him how to do all of that. So I am absolutely thrilled and excited. Okay, thank you guys for joining me for my curriculum choices videos. If you didn't catch any of the others, click on the playlist for homeschool 2022 through 2023, watch them all. And I cannot wait to do future videos about how I am using this, how it's going, anything else you want in a future video about this curriculum, drop it in a comment so I can use it to create ideas and content for you. Thank you guys so much. See you next time. Bye.